Hello, I hope you're well. I'm going to continue reading The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. And if you can remember, Edmund had been to see the Snow Queen and had told her that his siblings were nearby. Make ready our sledge, she ordered. In the meantime, Mr and Mrs Beaver was leading the children along the river bank. At last, when Lucy was so tired that she almost sleep on her feet, they came to a little snug hole where they would spend the night. They woke to the sound of jingle bells. Mr Be Beaver was out of the cave like a flash. Then they heard him shout, It's all right, come out everyone. It isn't her. They all scrambled up the steep bank. There, on his sledge, sat Father Christmas, big and glad. At last I've come. I've come at last, sorry, he said. The white witch has kept me out for a long time, but her magic is weakening. Aslan is on the move. And now for your presents, he smiled. Mrs Beaver, a new sewing machine is waiting for you at ho home. And Mr Beaver, you'll find your new dam quite finished. The kind creatures were so pleased they could hardly speak. Then Father Christmas gave Peter a magnificent sword and shield. For Susan, there was a bow and a quiver of arrows and a little horn. Last of all, they gave Lucy a clear crystal bottle and a small dagger. In this bottle, he said, there is a cordial made of the juice of the fire flowers. If you or any of your friends are hurt, a few drops of this will restore them. Then he cried out, Merry Christmas, long live the true king, and he drove out of sight. It is time that we too were moving, said Mr Beaver. Edmund, meanwhile, had been having a horrible time. When he asked the White Witch for Turkish delight, she merely said, Silence, fool! And as they sped through the darkness, he felt colder and more miserable than ever before in his life. He didn't look now as if she intended to make him a king, and he longed to be with the others. At last morning came, and they were travelling along in daylight. Suddenly the witch stopped the sledge. Nearby set a merry party celebrating the return of Father Christmas. In fury, the witch turned them all to stone, and Edmund, for the first time, felt sorry for someone besides himself. As they raced on again, Edmund noticed that he was feeling much less cold. Soon, patches of green began to show through the snow. The sledge gradually came to a halt, and the witch ordered them to leave it behind and walk. When Edmund heard birds singing, his heart leapt, for he realised that the cruel's, winter's cruel winter was over. Miles away, the children were walking into what seemed a delicious dream, through warm sunlight into green thickets and mossy glades. Not long now, said Mr Beaver, and began leading them up a hill. At the top of it stood the stone table and nearby all sorts of wonderful creatures were gathered around Aslan himself. Centaurs and unicorns, wood nymphs and water spirit sprites, deer and great birds. The children could hardly look into the lion's royal solemn eyes for he was both good and terrible at the same time. Finally Peter stepped forward and said, We have come, Aslan. Welcome. Peter, son of Adam, said Aslam. Welcome, Susan and Lucy, daughters of Eve. Welcome, he beaver and she beaver. His voice was deep and rich. But where is the fourth? He has betrayed them and joined the white witch, said Mr Beaver. Please, Aslam, can anything be done to save Edmund, said Lucy. All shall be done, said Aslan. Then he said to Peter, Come, son of Adam, and I will show you the castle of Carpaval, for you are the firstborn and will be high king of Narnia and all of the rest. Below them, in the evening light, where Narnia met the sea, the, the castle shone like a great star. Suddenly, a noise broke the silence. It's your sister's horn, says Aslan, running towards the sound. Peter saw creatures scurrying in every direction. Then he saw Susan swing herself up into a tree, followed by a huge grey wolf. 
Peter did not feel very brave, but he rushed straight up to the wolf and aimed a slash of his sword at his side. Quick as lightning, it turned on him. After a short, hard fight, Peter managed to plunge his sword into his heart, and a moment later the wolf lay dead. Quick, shouted Aslan, Aslan, centaurs, eagles, I see another wolf. He will, going to, he will be going to his mistress. Now, he, now is your chance to find the witch and rescue the fourth son of Adam. Instantly, a dozen of the swiftest creatures disappeared into the gathering darkness. Peter shakily wiped his sword clean on the grass. Hand it to me and kneel, son of Adam, said Aslan. Then Aslan struck him with the flat of the blade and said, Rise up, Sir Peter, wolf's blame. After Edmund had been made to walk further than he ever thought possible, the witch at last said, Halt! At that moment, a wolf rushed up to them, snarling. They are all at the stone table. They have killed my captain. Fly, fly! No, said the witch. Summon all our people. Call out the giants, the ghouls, the ogres and the werewolves. We will fight. Edmund found himself being forced to his feet by the dwarf and roughly tied to a tree. The witch muttered, Four thrones in Carpaval, and how would it be only there were three were filled? Edmund heard the awful sound of a knife being sharpened. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll finish the story on Monday. Have a lovely weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye.